Good morning, guys. I just my name is Lauren Wood, and this is your ID Pod Pod. Today is Thursday, February 6th. Let's look at some upcoming announcements. Seniors, please make sure you are looking at the guidance counselor's website for upcoming scholarships. Make sure you pay attention to requirements and deadlines. Scholarships can be printed or picked up in the guidance counselor office. The prom informational meeting will be next Friday, February 14th. Seniors and juniors and advisors, please make plans to attend this meeting. Newsflash, gourmet pizzas are coming to your lunchroom February 14th. You don't want to miss it. Now let's look at today's lunch. Today's lunch is crispitos, salsa, cheese sauce, and a juice. Tomorrow's lunch is steak nuggets, mashed potatoes, gravy, and a fruit. Now let's look at today's weather. Today's weather is a high of 63, a low of 32, and a 90% chance of rain. Tomorrow's weather is a high of 50, a low of 36, with a 10% chance of rain. Yesterday on The Legacy of Kobe, we looked at how he got into the league and his rookie year. So let's take a dive into his sophomore season. After the 97 playoffs, Kobe would head into his sophomore year with low expectations. But the duo between him and superstar center Shaquille O'Neal would truly come alive this year. And Bryant would make the 1998 NBA All-Star team at the age of 19, becoming the youngest NBA All-Star ever. Flash forward to the year 2000. Bryant and O'Neal had made a name for themselves around the league, and they would propel the Lakers to the NBA Finals, and they would win their first ring together. 2000 wouldn't be the end of the legendary tandem, however. The Lakers would three-peat. 2001 and 2002 would end with rings for the Lakers. Portland has three timeouts left. The Lakers have two. Bryant. All good things must come to an end though. The duo would go through tough times through the three-peat, with both of the superstars' egos clashing on multiple occasions, with Kobe even demanding either the Lakers trade O'Neal or they trade him. The Lakers would end up sticking with Bryant, and they would trade the star center to the Miami Heat after the Lakers would lose in the 2004 NBA Finals, thus officially putting an end to the legendary duo. Now that Bryant did not have to share the court with another superstar, he had the reins to the Lakers offense and would prove a worthy first option as he would lead the league in scoring two out of the next three seasons and would average an absurd 35.4 points per game in the 05-06 season, but controversially would fail to win MVP that year with those honors being given to Steve Nash of the Phoenix Suns. Kobe was a scoring machine at the time and had a stretch of nine games where he had 40 plus points and a stretch of five straight games where he had 50 plus points. But his most impressive scoring feat would come against the Toronto Raptors where Kobe would drop a mind boggling 81 points and would be in second place all time for most points scored in a game, coming only next to Wilt Chamberlain, who scored 100. Kobe Bryant, 28 for 46 from the field. This would be 18 for 20 from the line, and an 81 point for this crowd for number eight, Kobe Bryant. Here's today Black History Month fact. Black History Month began in 1926 by Carter G. Woodson, a noted African-American historian, scholar, educator, and publisher. This concludes of today's episode of Aggie Pride Pop. I'm Lauren Wood, and you have a thankful Thursday. Please stand for the pledge. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a dress code check. Please pause for the moment of silence. <laughs> 